Hi, my name is Caroline Wise and this is Venture Into OutSchool. Today I'm going to discuss how to get hired by OutSchool. Now first, a big disclaimer, I'm not an official spokesperson for OutSchool, nor am I a decision maker about who does and does not get hired by OutSchool. However, I have mentored quite a few people through the application process and I feel pretty confident about the things that work and tend to not work when you are applying. I do have a free application guide to anyone, whether or not I am your referring teacher, you're welcome to look at it and use it. It has graphic organizers to help guide your thinking. It has checklists and just all the best advice I could think of for how to get hired. All you have to do is click the link below to get the free application guide. I hope that you find it helpful. Before we get started, I do want to say that I really appreciate you being here and I hope that you will subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I want to read a comment by one of you on my first video about how to get hired by Owl School. This comment is by Misty Patterson. Wow, thank you for the video. Easy to understand, simplified and eye-catching. I currently teach online with VIP Kid and interned in OutSchool, but nervous and taking it slow. Thank you so much, Misty, for leaving that feedback. It means a lot to me that you would take the time to do that. Be sure to stay till the end of the video where I will share with you my sample one-time class descriptions. Maybe they'll help you in your application process. Let's get started. If you haven't seen my previous video about how to get hired by OutSchool, you can check it out with the link here and I'll put it in the description box below. I decided to make an updated video because shortly after I made my own video, the application process changed just a little bit. I'll keep my advice for the sort of resume portion portion of the application short because I talk a lot about that in the other video. But the most important things to mention are, number one, make sure your most important and impressive resume information is listed first, and then put the other stuff. You don't have to put everything in chronological order. Really, that can be a little bit boring to the reader. We want to see if you have teaching experience or how to prove your expertise in the area you want to teach. Put those things first, and then you can put the other things that don't pertain to this particular application quite as much below. Also, this might contradict my advice in my first video. I do think you want to edit a little bit, maybe cut some things. In my first video, I encourage you to put every single thing that you've ever done in every single category. And although there may be some truth to that, I'm finding people have more success if they edit, meaning shorten their responses just a little bit so that everything in their application pertains to the job they're applying for. For an extreme example, we don't need to know that you worked at McDonald's if you're applying to teach early reading. <laughs> Try to stick to things that in some way, shape, or form do connect to what you're going to teach. Many applicants who get denied come to me for help with their second try at applying. And one of the things I see in many of their applications are negative comments about themselves. I don't think they even realize they're doing it. They're trying to be self-deprecating. They might say something like, I don't have experience teaching this, or although I did not obtain my degree in this, just leave out anything that's even slightly negative about yourself. These people I'm referring to have the most fabulous resumes with the most interesting experiences, but they don't see themselves that way. They often see themselves as lacking, and so they will communicate that in their application sometimes, not even realizing they're doing it. So a lot of what I tell people to do is I find these little parts of the resume that read a little bit negative, even though they don't mean it that way, and I tell them to cut it. So you do that with your application, read through it or have a family member read through it and just see if there's anything that reads a little bit negative about yourself and cut it. One question I get a lot is should I put my responses in bulleted form or should I put them in paragraph form? I'm on team bullet form, but that's just how I like things. I like them short and punchy, but paragraph form also works completely fine. It's really personal preference and people have success with both. Now let's start talking about the new portions of the application process. They're new to people like me who applied a few months ago, but to you they seem perfectly normal. <laughs> the first one is a class description. So what I'm seeing here is that a lot of people want to describe these semester long classes, multi-day classes, long big classes, and it's a little overwhelming for them and a little overwhelming for me and probably a little overwhelming for the person reading the application. My personal opinion, take it or leave it, is that you should just describe a one-time class, maybe even just a one-time 30-minute class. They just want to see that you know what you're doing. Later, you can definitely, when you are hired, go into out school and make the most long, most beautiful classes in the whole wide world that are super complex. But while you're applying, in that little class description, I suggest a 100 to 150 word class description. Here are some things you ought to include in it. Your class description should feel sort of part advertisement for your class and part syllabus for your class. And that is directly from out school. That's what they said during my training that I took is that that's what they'd like their class descriptions 
to feel like. So you might start with a catchy sentence, a question, something to surprise the reader or pull them in. Then you wanna move into exactly what you'll be doing in class. Don't try to hide anything. If you're a lecture teacher, say that you're going to lecture, it's okay. If you're super interactive, put that. If the students will be accessing some outside resource like Kahoot or something, put that. Will the students have lots of opportunities to speak up and converse or not? Either way is fine, just be honest about what the class will look like because then you will videotape yourself pretending to teach this class and you wanna make sure the two match very well. You might also consider putting a class objective. Students will fill in the blank with a nice verb that tells what they will learn or do. You may want to use Bloom's taxonomy to get verb ideas for what the students will do. If you're not familiar with Bloom's taxonomy, it's just um, a hierarchy of thinking skills. Bloom's taxonomy really helps me push myself and my students into higher levels of thinking when I'm planning classes. So if you're able to use some of those verbs in your description of what students will do in your class, it may really impress the person reading your application. All right, now let's talk about this video. It's supposed to be three to five minutes. Many people ask, should I introduce myself or just immediately begin teaching the lesson? My personal view is it's good to introduce yourself and provide just one or two of your top credentials. And then also at the end, thank the interviewer for watching your video. But that said, I've seen many people be successful without doing that and just turning on the camera and immediately teaching the pretend student. But for me, I would say something like, hi, my name is Caroline Wise, and I have my master's degree in gifted education, and I have a passion for meeting the intellectual and social emotional needs of gifted students. And then I would teach my lesson. And then at the end, after my lesson has been taught, I might say something like, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to hearing from you. So just a brief introduction and conclusion to sort of bookend the lesson. Again, I've seen many people be successful who don't want to do that, and they still get hired. If you're having a hard time organizing your thoughts about your lesson for the video, I would suggest including three parts in your little mini lesson. The first part would be building some kind of rapport with the students. What might you say to get to know them or to assess their interest in the topic? Next, you might want to teach. <laughs> so are you lecturing? Are you asking students to raise their hand if they'd like to contribute? Are you polling the students by having them chat in the chat box what they think? Think about how you might interact with the students or present the material. Are you using props or regalia or visual aids to help you? Are you a tech savvy teacher and you're using picture in picture to show something or are you holding it up? Any way is fine, but I would consider having some kind of prop or visual aid to help you. And then the third piece would be to assess their knowledge. Is there some way you could see if they learned it correctly? I'm going to kind of contradict myself here about energy level when you're teaching online. So speaking to those of you who come from the online ESL world, myself included, most of us need to tone it down. We do not need to speak slowly. We do not need to pronounce our words very carefully. We need to be more natural and have more natural gestures and use props more naturally than we really would in the ESL classroom. OutSchool is inundated with ESL teachers applying and that's great, we bring a lot to the table, but we do need to dial it down so that our students feel comfortable with us and like we are normal teachers they would see in their classroom. However, if you're not coming from an online ESL background, I actually would suggest that you amp up your energy just a smidge. There's something about being on video that kind of makes you look less energetic than you felt like you were. I remember when I was a dancer, if I watched a dance in person, it would blow my mind, the energy, the enthusiasm the dancers had. But then if I watched that same dance with the same dancers on video, it would just kind of fall flat. There's something about video that we really need to push through to be noticed and to seem energetic and happy to be there. So maybe you smile a little more than you normally would, you gesture just a little bit more, you use maybe one or two props, regalia, visual aids to engage your audience, your pretend student on the other side of the camera. Another thing you want to consider is looking directly into the camera. Many teachers I see are looking over here or they're not quite sure where to look. Envision a student on the other side of the camera that really you're connecting to with your heart and that will come across to the OutSchool application reviewers. One question I get a lot is do you have to edit your video? No, you don't. It is kind of nice to edit out those mistakes. I use iMovie on my Apple computer to edit my videos. It's not a super sophisticated program. Anybody could probably learn it. Yes, you can edit. No, you don't have to edit. I mostly see people edit a little bit, but if that's way out of your wheelhouse, it's okay. Just make a mistake and keep on going because that's what will make you endearing to the people watching you anyway. 
Now I plan to create two sample videos for what I would send to OutSchool if I were applying today. If you're interested in seeing those videos, please click the subscribe button and the alert bell so that you can see them when I get them up and ready to post. Now you do not need a referring teacher to be hired by OutSchool. I didn't have one. I do suggest you have somebody with a very scrupulous eye to read over your application and make sure you don't have any errors. And if you'd like me to be that person, I'd be happy to do so. All you have to do is email teachercarolinewise at gmail.com and I'd be happy to look over your responses and give you any feedback that I can provide. I do only take one to two referrals at a time because I put a lot of energy and time into them and I want to make sure that I don't get overloaded and I'm able to give my referrals my full attention. I also provide you with my best advice for booking classes because getting hired is one thing, but then you also want to book your classes so you can make that money and teach those kiddos. That is also a difficult step and I won't leave you hanging. If you use me as a referring teacher, I will provide you with the best advice I can for how to book classes as well. As mentioned before, I'm now going to share with you a couple of class descriptions for my classes. These are my two most successful classes. So these descriptions seem to be working. Hopefully you'll find them helpful as you're writing your own description. Keep in mind that you can search OutSchool for all the class description examples that you want. These are currently public as are many others from other great teachers. So you can poke around and see what other people do to see what's successful and what feels true to your style and what you want to say in your class description. This first description is for a sing-along phonics class for three and four-year-olds. Let's use music and actions to remember the letter sounds. By repeating after the teacher, students will learn a new alphabet song that includes letter sounds and actions for each letter. Learners will also practice reading and spelling some CVC words. There will be sharing opportunities throughout class if learners feel comfortable speaking. Feel free to watch a video of the full alphabet song on YouTube to get more practice with the actions. This class is intended for learners who are new to the alphabet or would like more practice with individual letter sounds. Class activities, greetings, sing-along phonics song, what's in the box, review sing-along phonics song, and goodbye. As you can see, I like to put a play-by-play -play of what we're going to do in class so that the parents know what to expect and therefore my class will meet their expectations. One of the biggest complaints by out-school parents is that the class experience does not match the class description and you don't want to do that in your application either. So always kind of be double checking, am I actually providing what the class description says that I will do? Here's another class description for older students. It's an optical illusions class. Can you really believe your eyes? In this fast-paced, one-time class, students will enjoy exploring some optical illusions and other strange phenomena related to perception. We will discuss how our eyes take in data, but our minds interpret that data, sometimes incorrectly. Students are free to bring and share their favorite illusion. We will learn how to draw an impossible trident and Necker cube, time permitting. Please have a pencil and paper handy. Though this class was created for gifted learners, students need not be formally identified. Twice exceptional students are welcome. Feel free to message me ahead of time so I can best meet the child's needs. I look forward to seeing you in class. Class activities, greeting, enjoy and analyze illusions, part lecture, part discussion, draw illusions, review. And then I list some types of illusions that we will look at. If you're watching this video and you're just not sure if you want to dive into this out school teaching world, I highly suggest it. It's fabulous. I've had great experiences with each of my classes. I haven't had a bad class yet. The students are great. The people who work for OutSchool have been very responsive and lovely to work with. And I really encourage you to try it out. Research OutSchool. It started as a platform mostly for homeschooling students. And ever since coronavirus hit, their business is just booming. So it's a great time to dive in, give it a go. You really have nothing to lose. You can make classes as slowly or as quickly as you want. You can just start by making one class and just teach that for a while until you feel comfortable and then you can always add another one on first. It's not going to come at you like a freight train. You get to kind of pace how quickly or how slowly you wish to put yourself out there on the OutSchool platform. All right, well, that concludes our video. You can find me on Instagram at teacher underscore Caroline. I share tips for online teaching and also a few little personal things here and there as well. If you found this video helpful, I hope that you'll consider clicking the thumbs up button. That's a great way to support any YouTube creator who you feel is creating valuable content. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a great day, a great fall, and happy school year starting for everyone. Goodbye.